Hi, Dave Williams here, and in this video I want to show you how to design a counter that has a truncated sequence. And we're going to do this design of the counter directly using JK flip-flops. What you see right here is a 4-bit synchronous up counter that counts from 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1, 1, and then rolls around to the beginning. In a previous video, I, I walked you through the logic that is required for generating this counter. And today, we're going to use the same, well, the same number of flip-flops, but we are going to truncate the counter at a certain value instead of, instead of counting through the entire range of numbers that this counter can go through. So what I'm going to show you is a more general approach to a design of a counter and use that generalized approach to design a counter that counts from 0 to 9 and then repeats itself over and over and over again. The first step in this approach is to come up with a state transition diagram, which is simply a diagram showing all of the different states, in this case all of the different counts that we're going, we are going to go through, and how those counts move from one state to another. So we want to do, want to do a counter that counts from 0 up to 9, or in binary that's from 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 0, 0, 1. So we are going to need a 4-bit counter for this design. And a 4-bit counter is going to require four flip-flops. So that's going to come into, a play, into play in a sec. So the state transition diagram for this counter is going to look like this. The first state is 0, 0, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 1, and then 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, 1. The actual format of this diagram doesn't really matter as long as you are showing all of the states. 6, 7, 8, and 9. So each one of these is a state. And we transition from state to state and we can represent that transition with these arrows. If you're at 0, 0, 0, 0, you're going to go to 0, 0, 0, 1 next, and then to 0, 0, 1, 0, and then to 0, 0, 1, 1, etc. And then once you get up to 9, the last transition is back to 0, so we'll continuously go around these states until the, until the state machine gets turned off. Now, all of this information in the state transition diagram can be moved into a straight state transition table, which can allow us to see in another forum how the states transition from one state to another state. So ultimately, what we're going to design is going to be something that looks like this. It's going to be a little bit different because we're truncating the sequence, but we will have four flip-flops, But and the logic that is controlling the inputs to the flip-flop is, going, is going to be different because it's a truncated sequence. And I'm going to relabel these because of the labeling I'm going to use in my state transition table that I just talked about. This is called going to be called QA. This is going to be called QD, the output of this flip-flop. The output of this flip-flop, I'm going to call it QC. And the output of this flip-flop, I'm going to call QD. So for each one of these flip-flops, I am going to be designing the input logic to the flip-flop in order to create my truncated sequence counter. So here's the start of my state transition table. I have these two blocks with my QD, QC, QB, QA, and QD, QC, QB, and QA. And what this table, what these two different blocks are, this is the present state. And this is the next state. So for every for every state, there's always going to, there's going to be a transition to a new state. So filling in the present state table is going to have my values from 0 up to 9. Well, really with 4 bits, it's going to be 0 up to 15 or 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1, 1. But there's a number of states that we're going to be able to ignore. And for each one of these present states, there is another state that it transitions to. For, so for example, from 0, 0, 0, 0, the next state is going to be 
0, 0, 0, 1. We count from 0 up to 1. And then from 1 to, we count to 2. 0, 0, 1, 0. And then from 2, we count to 3. 0, 0, 1, 1, etc. And then when we get up to count 9, we want to transition back to 0. And all of these states, we can, these, these are invalid states in my 0 to 9 counter, so we can treat these in two ways. We can either say, if we are in one of these states, we're going to transition definitely to 0, or we can say, if we're in one of these states, we don't really care what state we're going to transition to. But in order to have tighter control over our system, let's say that if our system happens to get into any one of these invalid states, we will transition to zeros. The next thing that we have to do is look at each individual flip-flop and see how, and, and just see how it changes from its present state to its next state for each one of the states. So for example, if we are in the state 0000, zero, zero, zero we look at QD, it's a zero, it doesn't change, it stays at a zero. In this state, it's a zero, doesn't change, it stays to a zero. And that's actually the same for everything except down to, to these two states. So QD will always transition to a zero except in a couple of states. Here, if it's a zero, it transitions to a one. Here, it's a one, it stays at a one. And here, when it gets into state nine, one, zero, zero, one, it's a one and it transitions back to a zero. So we use, we look at all of these transitions and then we figure out for, since we're using JK flip-flops, we figure out what value you, we need the J to be and what value we need the K to be in order to initiate that change. As a bit of a sidebar, let's refresh ourselves on the operation of a JK flip-flop. If J is equal to zero and K is equal to zero, then Q doesn't change. If j is equal to 0 and k is equal to 1, q will be set to a 0. And remember, all these changes I'm talking about only occur on the clock edge. If j is equal to a 1 and k is equal to a 0, then q will change to a 1. And finally, if j is equal to a 1 and k is equal to a 1, then Q will toggle. In other words, if it's a zero, it will become a one, and if it's a one, it will become a zero. So using this information about a JK flip-flop, we can build a, a flip-flop transition table to look at how each one of our, to look at, at the values or to determine what values we need J and K to be in order to, to force the change in the Q values for each one of the flip-flops. So, Going back to this table, going from a present state to a next state, the Q is either going to change values or it will keep the same value. So there's actually four different possible state transitions or bit changes when we transition from state to state. That a particular flip-flop could be a zero and remain a zero on the clock pulse. It could be a zero and it might change to a one. It could be a one and it could change to a zero, and it could be currently a one and stay at a one. So for each one of these combinations, what value, for each one of these bit change, changes, what value does J need to be, and what value does K need to be to cause this transition? So in order for a bit to change from a zero to a zero, we can either force Q to be a zero, or cause no change to occur. So we can either have J zero or K zero, or J0 and K0, or J0 and K1. So we would need to have J be a zero, and K, we actually don't care what K is going to be. To have this transition from a zero to a one, we can either cause a toggle to occur. Oh, I just noticed I forgot the E. We can cause the, a toggle to occur, or we can cause, we can force Q to become a one. So we can have J well, joy, J has to be a 1, and it doesn't matter what K is, because we can either force it to a 1 or we can force the toggle. If we're transitioning from a 1 to a 0, we can either force 
q to the 0 by having j equals 0 and k equals 1. Or we can cause a toggle to occur. So in both those cases, k is equal to a 1. So k has to be a 1 for that 1 to 0 transition to occur. But it doesn't actually matter what j is, because we can either force the toggle or we can force the, the change. Finally, to have this transition from a 1 to a 1, that can, we can have that occur if we are forcing q to be 1. So that's where that k is a 0 and j is a 1. Or we can cause no change. So again, k is a 0, but j is also a 0 this time. So if this transition, k has to be a 0, and it does not matter what j is. So I, I've redone the state transition table here, so we've got it as, as reference. And I've drawn a couple of new columns, and I'll actually need to use these ones as well, but we'll just start with, with uh, these columns. So what these columns represent, this is the j value and the k value for the d bit that we require for each one of these transitions from a 0 to a 0 and a 0 to a 0 and down here from a 0 to a 1. So using this state transition table or this flip-flop transition table, yeah, this is the state transition table, this is the flip-flop transition table. We look at the bit change for the QD for each one of the rows and then identify what the J value and the K value need to be for that change. So here for a 0 to a 0 transition, we need J to be a 0 and K to be an X. And for all of these rows down to here, it's going to be the same thing. Then for this row, the QD transitions from a 0 to a 1. The 0 to a 1 transition requires J to be a 1 and K to be an X. For, z for the QD to transition from a 1 to a 1, we need J to be an X and K to be a 0. For this transition from a 1 to a 0, we need X to be, we need J to be an X and K to be a 1. And we have the same transition from 1 to 0 for all of these other rows. Now this is our truth table for the JD and the KD value for this, for the D flip-flop, the most significant bit. And then we repeat the same thing for the C bit, the second most significant bit. So we look at the transition, 0 to 0, 0 to 0, 0 to 0. So the 0 to 0 transition requires J to be a 0, K to be an X. And then this, we have a transition from a 0 to a 1. So that requires j to be a 1, k to be an x. And then 1 to a 1 requires x, 0. 1 to a 1 again requires x, 0. 1 to 1 requires x, 0. Then 1 to 0, the change 1 to 0 requires x, 1. And then we follow the same rules to fill in the rest of the table. And I continue doing the same thing for the JB and KB for the transition of QB to in the present state to QB of the next state. And for JA and KA for the transition of QA in the present state to QA in the next state. And finally, we finished the state transition table. So it is a lot of work, but it's mostly just busy work. The next set of steps is taking each one of these columns, the JD, KD, JC, KC, JB, KB, JA, and KA, as individual outputs with the present state as the inputs and create a Carnot map, and then from that Carnot map come up with a logic expression for each one of these. So we'll have a JD equals something, a KD equals something, a JC equals something, and a KC equals something. Okay, so I've gotten rid of a lot of the clutter so we can just focus on JD and KD. So remember, this is JD will be one output, KD is another output, and the inputs are based on the present states. 
So I can create a Carnot map with my inputs being the QD, the QC, the QB, and the QA. And fill in the Carnot map with the JD values. So you notice I got rid of the, the next state stuff because that's actually, we don't need that information. We've already used that information to create the JD and KD values. So I'm using the present states as the inputs and I'm gonna fill in the Carnot map with my JD values. So at zero, 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 JD is a zero. So the great thing about these K maps is that I've get, I get lots of X's. So when I'm doing the next step in my K maps, I make my group. There's only one group I need to make and come up with a logic for JD. JD is going to be equal to QC, QB, QA. So I'll have some logic to implement this that's feeding into the JD value. And I can do the same thing with my KD value. So here's my Carnot map, and I look at all the KD values and put this into the truth table. The first two rows are all X's, and then everything else except for 1000 is A1. Do my groupings. There's one big group there, one big group there, and one big group there. And this gives me a KD value of this group will be QC. This group here will be QA. And this group here will be QB. And then I repeat the process for my JC and KC. So here's the JC Carnot map table. And for KC, we will have and now that the Carnot map tables are filled, I can make my groupings. There's the one grouping for JC, which will be QA, QB, not QD. And then down here for KC, I'll have a grouping of four like that, and a grouping of eight like that. So this grouping right here will be um, QA, QB, and that will be ORed with this group right here, which is QD. So again, now that I have an expression for KC, for KC and JC, I can create logic circuits using this expression and this expression and the input, the, the outputs of each one of those logic expressions will go to the J input and the K input of flip-flop C. So I've jumped ahead and redone the truth table as well as the Carnot maps and logic expressions for the JB and KB inputs. I just wanted to save a little bit of time instead of going through the whole process. We can see what the JB and KB values are here. The logic expression going into the JB will be not QD and QA, and the logic expression going into KB will be QA or QD. And I've also gone ahead and done the truth table and the Carnot maps and the logic expressions for both JA and KA, and you can see here that JA is e going to be equal to not QD or with not QC and not QB. And interestingly down here, KA is going to be equal to one, so the input to the KA of the least significant flip-flop is going to be set high. And putting all of this work together, I have got eight expressions for all of the J's and all of the K's for all four of the flip-flops that will be needed for this counter. So the last step is to lay down the flip-flops and connect all of the appropriate inputs to the flip-flops so that the appropriate outputs can be generated.
And the very last step is to connect a synchronizing clock to each one of the flip-flops. And I have designed my zero to nine counter using JK flip-flops. So I hope you learned a little bit in this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.